If you are still struggling with kickflips like I've been for the last three years, welcome to the club. My name's Dan, and I'm learning to skate again in my 40s. And as I'm doing so, of course, I wanted to learn how to kickflip really well. And I'm not fully locked in, but I'm, I'm pretty close to where I can just throw one down as I'm skating around in a session. And it really is a great feeling. And so I had to overcome some obstacles and some hurdles to kind of get there. There's a lot of really great content on YouTube, and I'm thankful for all of the creators. Um, and I wanted to contribute some of what I learned there that was helpful. And uh, frankly, some of what I learned from those videos that wasn't so helpful that I had to sort of overcome and come up with a different approach on my own. Um, so let me walk you through some of that and maybe seeing the approach that I've taken over the last few years and honestly about three to six months of kind of intense focus over the last year, uh, maybe that'll be helpful for you as well. So let's, let's jump into that content. All right, let's get into some of the nuts and bolts of what has worked for me and, and what hasn't. Um, first, the setup. The setup ends up being kind of more important than I thought it would be. I had a few different setups that were heavier or larger that I just couldn't get comfortable on. And so it, there's a lot of value in experimenting to what works well for you. I have a couple of other YouTube videos you can watch of different types of setups that I've tried that are either very light or, or on the contrary. Um, beyond that, then as you watch tutorials on YouTube, they'll generally talk about three things, where you put your feet, kind of how you do your pop and how you do your flick. And I think all those are important and I'll give my own take on them. But in addition to that, I want to talk about where you put your center of gravity, kind of how you position your body and where you put your eyes and ultimately your shoulders, because those end up being important as well. All right. Now, the first step you'll often see is something along these lines. They'll say you want to get really comfortable just doing this over and over again, get really comfortable on your board. And if you're not comfortable on your board to be able to do that first, maybe go work on ollies and other things before you make your way to kick flips. Um, but I want to talk about a few things of this posture that didn't work well for me. Okay. First of all, um, this is not how you pop your board. You don't pop your board with your whole leg. In fact, let me go grab this basketball. Hang on a second. So I wouldn't dribble a basketball with my whole arm. You dribble a basketball with your, your wrist, maybe a little bit of your arm, but sort of a lot of your wrist. The same is true with popping your skateboard. It's a lot of ankle that's in there, not so much the whole leg, right? So it's worthwhile spending time popping with your ankle. And then the second thing, while you're at it, do your pop and then get your foot up and out of the way because you're going to need that up and out of the way for when the board flips over underneath you. So practice that. And you can even practice that just with a, a straight up ollie, where you ollie and get your back foot up and out of the way. Okay, one more thing to note here. Let's talk about the physics of this. When you're, when you're dragging an ollie or when you're flicking a kickflip, you're making force towards your front foot direction. So it's going to make the board move in that direction. So you need some kind of force to counteract it in the opposite direction. So if you watch in slow-mo, you'll see that right after I pop or before I pop, I guess, the board actually goes backwards ever so slightly. I try to help that along by taking my back foot and turning it just a little bit. That way I can pop backwards sort of just a little bit to counteract that force of the flick or the drag forward. And now you really see this when you're just stationary, but this also happens when you're moving. It just means that you slow down right as you pop and then flick, and then you speed back up again after you land with that momentum. Okay, so those are the first couple of things of the pop. Uh, second, let's look at the body position where your weight is. If you're practicing doing this, then what you're practicing doing is putting all of your weight over your back foot, and your body is back sort of behind the board which means that when you flick, you're gonna flick this thing out in front of you, you're going to rocket flip. And in the videos that you'll see here in a bit as I was learning this, it's all over the place. I'm rocket flipping all over the place. And in fact, oftentimes they'll teach you to flick by, by doing that. And that's very much an up motion. And you can see it in my clips in here just a little bit of how much I'm flicking kind of up and it's making the board rocket flips, putting my weight behind the board. And then I end up landing like this a lot, kind of right on the tail rather than being able to level the board out and land more towards the front. And so a key there was learning that I actually need to put a majority of my weights or my center of gravity over my front foot. So I would just cruise around the skate park with only my front foot and kind of get used to that feeling. And then as I'm preparing to do a kickflip, I actually think of this, like, okay, center of gravity more towards your front foot, 
Where's your back foot going to be? Okay, give it a little bit of a pop. And this is a good time to talk about shoulder position and eyes as well. Let me turn this way. It's going to be really easy when you do your flick to want to open up your shoulders. Especially if your eyes are watching your front foot, when you do your flick, naturally you're just going to open up your front shoulders. And that causes a lot of problems. Uh, and so what you need to try to do is keep your shoulders parallel over the board. And so I will kind of pretend that I'm sitting in a chair behind me, kind of like a front shove, Ooh. sitting in a chair behind me. And then when I go to flick, I'm actually looking a little bit more towards my back foot. And I just had to get used to doing the flick without watching the flick. And I'm looking a little bit more towards my back foot. The board flips underneath me. I see it come up and hit my back foot. Then I get my front foot back on. And again, the majority of my weight's over the front foot as I land. Okay, I think we hit many of the things of the pop that were very useful for me. At that point in time, uh, I, I understood the pop a little bit more. I didn't fully understand the center of gravity, but I could finally get two feet on the board, albeit rocket, and it was time to go start working it. So once I got to a place where I could actually get both feet on the board, at least every once in a while, then I went into about a two month period of intense focus on this. And at least once or twice a week, I would do a skate session where I tried to get five lands that I could actually record that I had both feet on the board. And it may not be the, the best looking kickflip in the world, but it was a kickflip and I got both feet on the board. And I ended up filming those. And so you can watch the progression over those two months of, of how I learned and adapted and changed my style over that. And I think you can learn some things from that. So let's take a look at those. These recordings represent about 600 attempts over the course of two or three months. And this is the very first session where I actually got five that I felt comfortable, you know, recording and showing to you guys. They're pretty rocket. The, the flick is slow. I'm not making good contact with the board on the flick, so it's flipping very slowly. But I got both feet on the board five times. Now, as you can see here, not only did I learn that wearing these skinny pants was no good for me, but uh, I'm still pretty rocket and still don't have very good contact on the board. But enough confidence that I'm starting to level it out a little bit and I actually got one rolling. All right, now I'm getting more confident with this deck. This was this old Johnny Geiger that was uh, super lightweight that I really enjoyed. And so I'm starting to get a little more power in the flick, starting to level it out a little bit better, feeling confident with the setup. And I'm thinking, all right, I can, I can do this. I like this a lot. Yeah, so I'm gonna need a new deck after that. <laughs> didn't work out here you can see a couple of sessions later 123 attempts right just to get some decent ones it really shook my confidence having to figure out kind of where to put your feet and where to put your weight with this new setup notice how my flick is up that's really making it rocket flip This was a really good session. I don't know what was it, what it was about it, but I really enjoyed the session and I was feeling more confident rolling, going a little bit faster, a little bit better leveled out. That was a good one. That was still pretty rocket. But the good times don't last long. Here we're back to 97 attempts just to get some good ones again. Still pretty rocket there. And, and so, you know, your confidence will be shaken. It might be a cold late fall day, but you've got to get out there and keep building the muscle memory. All right, here it's starting to come in, feeling better. I'm back at the skate park, uh, different deck again, I believe. And, you know, a little bit lower to the ground and still a little bit rocket, but I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Unfortunately, shortly after finishing those sessions, and I was feeling you know, pretty decent about the kickflip, but I knew I still had a ways to go. I ended up breaking my left foot on a varial kickflip that I missed the board and rolled my, my left foot really hard and broke a bone. And so that was about a six month recovery process, the first couple months of just getting, you know, walking back and then slowly getting skating and confidence back. Right now having that pause of kind of six months to recover and get your confidence back, actually was good for me because you know sometimes you need to try a bunch of different things try putting your feet or your body in one position and do 10 or 20 kickflip attempts and see how it feels and then go to a different thing and try 10 or 20 and see how it feels and then another one and then compare and you know i would do that all the time i would take notes i'd record a little video at the end of a session of hey this worked really well for me or that didn't work and i'd watch that the next time to kind of refresh myself of what i had tried the last time 
And sometimes you need that, but sometimes you also need a break where you can kind of step back and look objectively, like, is this actually working? What do I need to try differently? And, and thankfully, I had some footage of a friend of mine, Patrick. Get my good side. And Patrick's flick is very different than mine. And so his rotation is so much faster than mine. And so I had done a comparison of, of my flick and rotation compared to his uh, at the time. And I went back and looked at it. And here, let me, let me play it for you. All right, looking at Patrick's as he pops with his back foot, like dribbling a basketball, gets that back foot up and out of the way. Now look at the flick, kind of that rolling motion off to the side and just how quickly the board rotates, catches it with his back foot and done. All right, looking at mine, very different. Similar pop with the back foot, like dribbling a basketball and getting the back foot up and out of the way. But notice how it's more of a sweeping motion as the flick and the pop are happening together. And my flick is more off the nose, kind of straight off the nose, and the board rotates much slower. Still catch with the back foot and done. When you watch it in real time, you can see just how quick Patrick's flip is. And mine was just so much slower. And so what you can see there is just his flick and rotation is so much faster than mine. I had to come up with a different way to put my foot on the board. So I spent some time working on that. And let me show you what I found. All right, let's talk about the flick and what I learned that was helpful for me. As I saw in a bunch of videos, they taught you to learn how to flick sort of by doing this. Put your board here kind of in an ollie position, you turn your foot over, and then you flick off the edge, right? And as I mentioned earlier, this taught me how to rocket flip because your foot is really kind of turned over a lot, but beyond that, you're, you're flicking up. And I think the reason that they teach that is to avoid people flicking down to the ground. Um, and I get that. I understand why flicking down to the ground is a bad thing because you're never going to get your front foot on the board. But flicking up into outer space isn't working for me either. So what I had to do to kind of get over that was sort of put my board aside and I pick up piece of carpet or smooth ground or something, kind of pretend that I was sitting on my board and then trying to keep the weight over my front foot and do the flick and then catch my weight again on my front foot. And I would just do that over and over and over again. And here, let me grab the shoe, hang on. And what I was really trying to do is focus the energy along the rubber here of the shoe, not so much up the leather or the laces, but kind of along the rubber. And I was telling myself that I was turning my foot over and I was rolling off the edge and getting this kind of rolling motion off the edge. Not down, but just straight out. And you'll see my better kickflips, it's more of a straight out motion. It's not an up and it's not a down. In reality, my foot actually comes up to about here and then rolls off the edge like that. And there's a really nice thing that happens from coming up off the nose, get down to the ground here, is that when you come up off the nose, you pop. Oh, and by the way, when you pop, you can pop off this edge a little bit to get the board to pop sort of like this rather than straight. And if you do that, then you already have an advantage for your flick because it's easier to get the flick to go. So you, if you want, you can try your back foot position to see if you can get the board to pop up at a slight angle rather than popping up just straight. Another little tip. But when you pull up here and roll off the nose, it will force the nose down and the back of the board up into your back foot, which is already raised up and waiting, waiting to catch it there. So it'll raise it up into your back foot. You put your front foot on and lower it to the ground. Now, another thing you can do is just maybe line up some tennis balls or some other balls on the ground. And as you're doing this process of learning that flick, that kind of rolling and then flick it off motion, you can actually make some targets with those balls. So you're going to roll, flick. That was a bad one. Roll, flick. Roll, flick. And that gives you a target to kind of aim at, which is just kind of nice. Uh, it keeps you interested. So that's something you can do a lot of, right? You give your weight kind of on your front foot, pretend you're standing on your skateboard, give it a nice flick, weight back on that front foot, and then you're catching it with your back foot. All right, now one other way you can practice that is with the board itself, right? So you can kind of try to do that roll flick off the edge of the board. Again, out, not down, but just 
get used to it turning over, kind of catch it with your other foot. And you can do that a lot. Get used to that feeling of when you hit the edge of the board, give that last little oomph where you're not just pulling out straight the whole time, but you're pulling out and you're actually flicking it out. And you can just practice that a lot. Use the concave at the edge of the board as something to kind of grab onto. All right, so I've got my front foot, middle of the toe is right on that bolt. Some people are further back and they just travel more before they flick off the edge. Uh, the closer you get to the edge, the sort of easier it is to do the flick. For me, I found middle toe right on the bolt at like a 45 degree angle to be my good spot. Back foot, I'm gonna slight angle that way. I'm not quite straight, I'm gonna slight angle this way so I can pop backwards ever so slightly. And then as I'm sitting, most of my weight's over my front foot, and I'm just kind of trying to sit in a chair a little bit. So I'm not leaning too far forward, not leaning too far backwards, but sit in a chair just a little bit, because it's gonna, gonna flip backwards ever so slightly really, when you actually do the flip. Then, if you can get used to doing a flip and getting it to land, right there, where it was supposed to land, right there, then you're more comfortable putting your feet on it after it, if you, after you get pretty good with it landing right there, then you're kind of more comfortable being able to just put your feet on it the next time. All right, once you have the pieces, the pop, the flick, the, the body placement, you know, where your eyes are going to go, your shoulders, and it's time to start putting it together and trying to get your feet on the board. You know, we skaters are finicky. We need kind of just the right circumstances to go for it. And some people, I, I love them, they just go for it. And whenever I've tried to do that, I end up hurting myself. So I tend to take slower steps. And you know, one thing that you can try are these skater trainers. I bought these, not sponsored. Um, this doesn't work so well on your back wheels. Remember how earlier I showed you kind of need to pop backwards ever so slightly to counteract that force of flicking forward. So it doesn't work for me to put these on my back wheels for a trick like a, uh, like a kick flip. It does work better for like a pop shove it or a, or a 360. Um, but I could put one on a front wheel and that kind of helps. Um, what has also worked well for me is just putting a thin carpet down like I have here. So it allows you to still roll around a little bit, but you don't have quite as much of that squirrely motion of landing on the board wrong and having it shoot out. Um, in fact, for that reason, I don't like to learn new tricks on really smooth concrete. I prefer to go to like a parking lot that's kind of medium smooth uh, asphalt and, and then actually find a slope where I feel really comfortable in that slope. Sometimes it's rolling slowly uphill. Sometimes it's kind of uh, doing a kickflip back up a slope or, or forward up a slope in the other direction. So find what works well for you and then get comfortable getting two feet on the board and then roll ever so slowly. And hopefully watching the clips of me learning this over many months was helpful to you. Once I figured that out, and then I just wanted to put it into practice. So I recorded a few more sessions trying out that approach. All right, so coming off of injury and having this kind of new approach of a rolling flick off the side, I'm back out in the garage working on it stationary, and I was really happy with how this worked. I could tell that I was getting a faster rotation. Now, translating that into rolling and still getting the board to level out took a little bit more confidence building, but I was pretty happy with the progress I was making. I did a few more of those, I only recorded one of them, but I was starting to really build that confidence where I was like, all right, this is my kickflip. This is what I've learned how to do, and this is probably as good as it's gonna get, but I'm happy with it. All right, I think I've shared just about all that I can, and I really wish you the best in your journey. Hopefully it doesn't take you as long as it's taken me to lock in kickflips, but if it does, know that you're in the company of many others that have taken a long time to learn these tricks because they're not easy. But once you get them, there is a great sense of accomplishment. If you have other comments or, or tips that you think people will be uh, benefit from, please put them in the comments below. Record your own videos. And uh, thanks for coming along with me on this journey. Let's get out there, skate again, and good luck. Thanks. Have a good one.